A lot of people are confused about hot tub maintenance. I have a neighbor over here named Chris and he just got a new hot tub and he was totally befuddled by how to maintain it, what to do with it. And in fact, he kind of put off doing anything with it for a while just out of that kind of fear of the unknown. But really, it is incredibly simple and very time efficient to properly maintain your hot tub. It does not require a chemistry degree and it does not require hours of time or hundreds of dollars of chemicals. Let me show you right now exactly what I do to maintain my hot tub. Most of the time, I can do it in just a couple of minutes a week. So first we have to use a sanitizer. That can be chlorine or bromine. There are also a few alternative products out there. I do prefer bromine though. It's gentler on the skin than chlorine, but it does sanitize the water better than a lot of the alternative products that are out there. And more importantly, it doesn't dissipate in heat as fast as chlorine does. Chlorine gets destroyed quickly in hot water. That's why you see it a lot in swimming pools, but not as often in hot tubs. I put tablets in this floater right here. That makes it quick and easy. I just load it up about once a week twist that lid to get the lid off of there. Then I'm gonna pour in about five or six bromine tablets into here. And I'm at the point now where my floater was pretty much empty, so it's the perfect time. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm not really gonna be super precise with it. Then I'm gonna put the lid back on and kind of give it a twist. That way it locks it into place. Down here, you've got fins. These kind of open or close. You can kind of turn them by hand like that. I like to leave it almost entirely closed with just a tiny little crack right there. That controls the flow of water into here and controls how fast the bromine tablets dissipate. So I don't want them to dissipate too quickly because then that could over chlorinate the water and then I might have to wait a few days before I get in because it wouldn't be safe. Then I just kind of toss the floater back in. I'm done. That's it. I don't have to do anything else with my sanitizer for about one week. The next thing that I do is I will check the water levels with some test strips and I like to do it after I get out of using the hot tub. That way, if I need to adjust anything, I'm doing it after I get out. That way it'll be ready the next time and I don't have to wait to get in when I'm getting in to soak. These are what they call four-way test strips, which is really kind of a misnomer because there's only three tabs here, but one measures both chlorine and bromine. You're not likely using both, although you can use bromine sanitizer and chlorine shock, which is what I do, but there are only three different measurements on here. I'm gonna kind of dip it in for about two seconds. I'm gonna shake off the excess water and then we're just gonna kind of hold it up here to this guard here, this kind of chart. And you see here where the chlorine is definitely gone. That's why we just added those tablets, but I can add a little bit of chlorine shock to bring the chlorine levels up right now because the tablets will take time to disintegrate. Then you see here alkalinity, which is looking pretty good, and pH, which could be, is about right, maybe a hair on the high side. But bear in mind, if you adjust pH or alkalinity, it will affect the other one. It's almost impossible to adjust one without the other. Typically, I find, though, that I really only have to do major adjustments to pH or alkalinity, alkalinity especially, right after I've changed the water. Once I get the alkalinity set, I don't usually have to adjust it again until the next water change. pH can be affected by a few things. Sanitizer levels can affect it. How often people are using it and what might be on their skin, like body lotions and things like that, can affect that. But also, the running of the jets actually raises your pH slightly. That's a good tip too. If your alkalinity is perfect and your pH is a little low, just leave the jets on longer than you would normally, either while you're in there or before you get in or after you get in, and that will naturally raise the pH levels up a little bit. But right now, I don't really think I need to do anything with regards to that. I am going to add a little bit of chlorine shock. I mentioned a minute ago that I use bromine for my sanitizer. It's totally okay to use bromine sanitizer and chlorine shock. What you don't want to do is switch back and forth between chlorine and bromine sanitizer without doing a water change. That can be dangerous because the two chemicals do interact in a dangerous way, but bromine tablets and chlorine shock are formulated differently than bromine and chlorine sanitizer. I know that's a little bit confusing, but in terms of chlorine-based shock, I'm gonna add about a capful, maybe a hair less than that. And again, I'm just gonna eyeball it. You can see there how much I poured in. I'm just gonna toss it in. Now, normally whenever I adjust chemicals, I do then turn the jets on. Right now, for the purpose of this video, I actually have the power cut on my hot tub. That way it doesn't kick on accidentally in the middle of the video and create a lot of noise. I am gonna turn the power back on and run the jets for a few minutes just to kind of let all of that dissipate equally inside the water. I'm gonna turn on every jet and water feature. That way the chemicals and the water get pulled into every part of the hot tub through all of the plumbing, through the jets and anything like that. That way if there's any lingering water that is poorly treated that might be stuck in a plumbing line or something like that, it gets all taken care of and the chemicals that we just added will get dissipated completely throughout the entire hot tub. 